Nicholas Stahl, and I'm in my second year of undergrad in the Faculty of Kinesiology, and my project is an examination of bone deposition in overreactive cinematic monkeys post anti-resorptive treatment. When you think of osteoporosis, what comes to mind? The fact that it is a systemic impairment of bone mass that can result in fracture? How it is the most common metabolic bone disease in the world? Or maybe you think of treatments, such as denosumab, an antibody to rank L inhibiting the survival and function of osteoclasts, or alendronate, a bisphosphonate inhibiting the action of osteoclasts. These are all descriptions of osteoporosis, but my first thought when it comes to osteoporosis is diminished quality of life. That's why my objective is to determine which osteoporotic treatment is most effective in inhibiting a key factor of osteoporosis, excessively imbalanced bone turnover. I hypothesized that reduced bone turnover would be greatest in cinemogus monkeys receiving denosumab relative to all other groups because this was shown in studies of postmenopausal women with low bone mass, suggesting different mechanisms of action between treatments. 30 adult female cinemogus monkeys were overreactimized and divided into five treatment groups. One group was the control group receiving vehicle for 12 months. A second group received vehicle for six months, followed by denosumab for six months. A third group received alendronate for 12 months. A fourth group received alendronate for six months, followed by denosumab for six months. And finally, a fifth group received denosumab for 12 months. Fluorochrome labels were injected 15 and 5 days prior to bone collections, tetracycline prior to month 6, and calcine prior to month 12. All initial animal procedures were performed in an assessment and accreditation of laboratory animal care facility. Once sacrificed, I received the UMRI in neutral buffer solution, next decalcified them in EDTA, then embedded them in paraffin. I cut the samples using a microtome, then stained them using saffron and O or immunofluorescence. Images were created using a fluorescence microscope for qualitative and quantitative analysis using ImageJ. The top images here show bone that I stained using immunofluorescence and the bottom using saffron and O. Osteons are present throughout all images. The middle portion being the haversian canal where cortical bone forms and the rings surrounding demonstrate cortical bone deposition. Rings that are red are labeled with tetracycline and those that are green are labeled with calcine. I analyzed canals that demonstrated bone deposition by measuring the distance between two rings of the same fluorochrome, shown by the white line in image B. By looking at the immunofluorescent images, it appears that the control group experienced the most bone deposition and the denosumab group experienced the least. This was further analyzed through quantitative results and significance between the groups was demonstrated. This graph compares the mean and standard deviation of net bone deposition per day between groups. Green represents calcine and orange represents tetracycline. Bone deposition was evident in all monkeys from all monkey groups, but those receiving denosumab experienced significantly less bone turnover than all other groups, and monkeys receiving alendronate experienced significantly less bone turnover than the control group. To summarize with a focus on the tetracycline label, denosumab was most effective in inhibiting an imbalance of bone turnover, followed by alendronate, transitioning to denosumab, followed by alendronate, followed by vehicle transitioning to denosumab, finally followed by vehicle. How do I know that denosumab is the osteoporotic treatment that inhibits osteoporosis the most? First off, bone resorption and bone deposition are dynamic processes and are both indicators of bone turnover. The interaction between rank L and rank stimulates osteoclastic bone resorption. Denosumab inhibits rank L, separating this bond, inhibiting osteoclasts from resorbing bone. Therefore, when bone resorption was reduced due to the inhibition of osteoclasts by denosumab, bone deposition decreased as well, resulting in a reduced imbalance of bone turnover, lessening the effects of osteoporosis on bone. For future directions, I'm conducting immunofluorescence staining using TRAP to analyze bone resorption in medial UMRI samples of the cinemogus monkeys I was working with. If you are more interested in some of the topics I spoke about, here are my references. I would like to acknowledge my supervisor, Dr. Owen Krawitz, and also Dr. Ben Edwards, Alexandra Olson, Andrew Swatsky, and all my lab mates in the Krawitz lab. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and please feel free to email me with any questions you may have about my research.